got this. Let's go to here. Let's turn on. All right. I might need to fix that. Okay, hurry up so I can pause this thing. There we go. Got my chat here. Shh. Okay. All right. Welcome back, everybody. And uh, I think I'm just going to move forward with this glove. If anybody has any questions, obviously, feel free to shout them out. And we'll just keep moving on from here. So if I remember correctly, we left off with this thing with actual subdivisions here. So I can go in here and start adding in with my Damien Standard brush. Oh, well, maybe not. Let's see. Z add Z intensity. Um, and <laughs> it's not sculpting. Okay. Let's try this again here. There we go. Okay. Female tech suit here. Matt Cap Gray. Hit F to frame it. And then hopefully I can start sculpting on this. What am I missing here? Let me see. Geometry. Dynamic is off. Standard is on. Preferences. Edit. My cursor to surface. Display properties, double is off. Sub tool. Oh, I had a hidden mask on there. Um, just in case that happens to you, uh, you can always go to masking here. And if view mask is off, then you might have, I think what we did was, yeah, we masked uh, by border and then we made that mask come in so that we could go through here and add a not necessarily piping which we can add when we if we want to do you know frame that border mesh but just to kind of go around and kind of plump this up with either the standard brush in this case i might be inclined to use the um inflate brush so yeah okay now i remember i turned off view mask so i could see it um, just be careful when you do that because you might forget that you did indeed do that here so i'm going to go through here with the inflate brush a little bit and just around the top of these gloves here. I'm just going to kind of go through and inflate just a bit. We'll add a little ridge here and we you know we could also go through here and eventually because you know some if I was doing this for production I would probably end up doing things like stitches and stuff a little more non-destructively and probably end up doing it in the texture where I have a little bit more control. Um, but since we're here, we can also, might as well do it in the um, in ZBrush as well, because it's fun to do. Hey, Dynamesh, thanks for showing up. Holler out if you have any questions or if anything looks weird. I'm just kind of going through the motions today. And let's see here. Um, yeah, so if I wanted to go ahead and uh, take this one here, I'm going to take this and then expand Control Shift X, and I'm going to expand down just a bit, and then I'm going to go to our mask border here, and then I'm going to grow that mask, and then I'm going to sharpen it up, bring everything back invert it, and then turn on view mask here. Um, off the top of my head, I'm not sure how long the free trial is, but yeah, if you want to go check out the free trial, it's on Pixelogic's website. I want to say it's 45 days, but don't quote me on that. It's been a while since I've done a free ZBrush trial. But uh, yeah, if you want, if you do do the do do the trial, um, Pixelogic Classroom is a great place to start. And on my YouTube channel, I've got an intro to ZBrush uh, part one, which will kind of walk you through 
the process linearly. Um, it's also on my Gumroad and stuff. You can download it for free if you don't feel like streaming it through YouTube. But you can definitely check that out if you want. It's about, I want to say it's about 50 hours worth of video. It sounds like a lot, um, but there is a bit of overlap and just kind of, there's a couple videos on there where you just go through and, um, you know, make a couple character bust and stuff like that, as well as just kind of learning the basics and, you know, navigating around and all that good stuff. Cool. Nailed it. Hey, Andrew. Cool, man. Thanks for showing up. Um, I mentioned before, we're just kind of going through and kind of cleaning up these gloves. And I'm over here looking at this, like, motocross glove reference over here to see if there's anything cool we can kind of put in here, at least divide this thing up to kind of get some interesting material break up when we uh, go to texture this thing or render this thing in key shot. I mean, you can render in whatever you want. Um, if I was going the texturing route, I have a f I usually end up using a few more options, Octane, Keyshot, Redshift, Marmoset, uh, even Painter has that built-in, iRay, and all that good stuff. Uh, but the Keyshot to ZBrush Bridge is a really easy one. If, it, if it's a one button press solution, count me in. I'm all about it. Just trying to get some some kind of break up on where these folds are going to be. And depending on the type of wrinkles you end up putting in your glove can really dictate the feel of the glove as far as like what it's made from. If you put in a ton of wrinkles, it's going to have the effect of, um, you know, having a very lightweight object. If you have very few wrinkles, it's going to look a little heavier, a little more leathery. So I'm trying to just focus on the wrinkles kind of down in this area here. And uh, then we'll go through and do some piping, maybe run some, some, uh, yeah, I guess let's see, we can maybe even split this up. Cool, cool. Mm. I'm also using uh, Quadro for reference, if you guys never use that, it's pretty good. Um, K-U-A-D-R-O, you can launch that up and you can save presets and stuff. Oops, let's go ahead and throw this back up here. Uh, it just makes it easier, and you can throw it up on any screen, and then come and go and recall it later. Cool. Uh, question, how do you get the UVs from a ZBrush model the best way? Um, in ZBrush, you're probably going to end up using UV Master, which is um, fairly straightforward for the artist. There's a lot of UV tools and other programs, but it sometimes requires quite a bit of manual work. ZBrush's UV Master uh, does a lot of the grunt work for you. So if you did have a like a Z model mesh here, if we have our cylinder, our trusty cylinder, make poly mesh 3D. And then we'd go through here and like, uh, you know, if you want to kind of clean this thing up a little bit, we'll go to geometry, um, edge loop, delete loops. Uh, of course, when you initialize that primitive, you could get rid of those loops as well, but I'm lazy. So what I'm going to do is do an insert multiple edge loops. And we can throw in more edge loops like this, and then we can do Q mesh polygroup all and pull these things in or out or whatever you'd want to do. Um, another option of that is doing um, insert multi mesh, and you can do interactive elevation. So you can kind of pull out and go around or pull in and go in. I don't usually use that when I'm doing on cylinders, but what I will use it for is when we do like this bevel edge loop complete here. You can kind of throw in a bevel. And if you want to do bevel both sides, you've already done one value, again, you can just click and you're good to go. And then over here, you could do insert multiple edge loops with interactive elevation. And then you could pull that out and kind of round these corners out or round these corners in and start doing that. So you know what, we'll do rounded corners out and then we'll do rounded corners in on one side. And if I want to clean up these polygroups a little bit, one easy way to do that is under polygroups here, group by normals. Just set your max angle to anything that'll catch it. Now it's not going to catch these down here because they're uh, you know, there's very small degrees in between here. So an easier way to do this one is just to grab these with visibility and control W. That'll go ahead and throw that into a polygroup here. Uh, the reason you might want to do a polygroup is, again, just having the ability to, if we go to um, 
insert multi mesh. Let's turn off that interactive elevation for this one. You know, you can add polygroups as you go, and then you can do Q mesh in with polygroup all. You can polygroup all of these blue ones, or if you don't want to do that, you can do polygroup island. And you can go in, and then in for that one, then out for this one, out for this one, and now you have uh, that kind of modeling going. But as far as the UV question, um, it's a little bit easier to do UVs with polygroups simply because when you go over here to UV master, which is under your Z plugin, and we'll go to UV master here. Um, you know, this is, I think, symmetrical here. So you could keep symmetry on if you wanted to. You can have this polygroups option, which means everywhere there's a polygroup, it's going to split that off into its own UV island. So then you would just need to do unwrap, flatten. There you go. You got UVs. And then you can unflatten this. Of course, if you want to do it carefully, or more carefully, I should say, you can uh, do work on clone. That'll shoot you off onto your own mesh separate from your other mesh. So, And it also turns on uh, Skin Shader 4 so you can see it really well. And then again, you can just unwrap, flatten, get your UVs. Because these are just UVs that are it's just polygons on a flattened plane, basically, you can go in here and modify these. If you go to your brush options here, auto masking, mask by polygroups up to 100. You can just move these polygroups around. Um, you can use your move brush if you want. And since mass by polygroups is uh, at 100 is global, you can just use your move to kind of just move this stuff around or uh, make modifications or rotate with transpose. Um, now these are both part of the same polygroup here, so I would maybe mask this one. And then I could swing this one around. You can hold down shift to constrain it. And then W to move, all that good stuff. And then once you're done playing with that, we could go to unflatten copy UVs, go back to our original cylinder that we were working on here, and then paste UVs. And then if you go down here to your texture map here, you can go to create uh, from UV map, and it'll kind of just show you your UV map and where your seams are and stuff like that. So UV master is an easy way to kind of do that. Hey everybody, thanks for showing up. Oh, thanks for Thanks for reading my 80 level interview. That was a fun one. Um, is how easy would it be to use ZBrush for a chess set? Super easy, uh, especially one that can be 3D printed. There's a lot of 3D printing options, not only in ZBrush, what I'm using here. We'll call it Big Brother ZBrush or uh, Parent ZBrush. There's ZBrush Core, which is a little more um, streamlined. Uh, if you go to my YouTube channel, there's an intro to ZBrush Core as well as intro to ZBrush and it, it uh, and also on Pixelogic's website there's a lot of cool intro to core, uh, ZBrush core videos that you can walk through and uh, those have a lot of built-in 3D options. ZBrush does as well if you wanted to go through um, like Z plugin there's a um, 3D print exporter over here with all your 3D print exporting options some advanced options for exporting your STL, VRML, or OBJ files uh, you can import STLs if you want to, if you're coming in from like another 3D print program or a CAD program, sometimes we'll use that and all that good stuff. So yes, uh, so as far as like creating a chess piece, let's, let's do that. Let's make a couple chess pieces. I'm going to launch, um, that's a good one. I didn't even think about that. That'd be a fun one. The only problem is I don't know what a chess piece looks like, so... I haven't played chess since I was in grade school. Let's look at these. Oh yeah, these will be fun. Let's make some chess pieces with Z Modeler, and then, uh, and uh, you know what? Not even, not even just Z Modeler. We'll we'll sculpt some as well. I think that'll be a fun one. Um, let's see. Any more questions here? Uh, what was that island mistake of the blue one? Um, that one was just because when it went through and looked at the poly groups on here for some reason when it split it decided to break it up into two different different pieces instead of just keeping it all um, the same piece you can uh, you know I should have mentioned that you can go through here and in UV master you can kind of control where you want the seams to end up you can go over here to enable control painting and you can attract a seam here and you can go through here and you can kind of paint in uh, well first you're gonna want to turn off Mass by polygroups, obviously. Turn that back down to zero. You can say, hey, you know what? I want a seam back here. So you can kind of paint in where you want your seam. Or alternatively, if you want to protect an area, like on a face, 
or something, you can just go over here and be like, you know what, I don't care where you put the seam, but just make sure whatever you do, this is protected. Um, another really cool thing is this density thing you can paint here. Let me turn off polyframe so you can see that a little bit better. Um, so you can have an attract, a protect, um, you can erase it, and that just paints white. Uh, you can also go through here with density, and if you want to say like, you know, there's a, I'm using the world's worst example here, but if you wanted to, there's a face on this side and the back of the head on this side, you could make your the UVs in the face area like two times two or times three, and you could paint in more density for your UVs. And then if you wanted to paint in less density, like divided by three for the back of the head, you could paint that in. And then when you go to uh, UV this thing, if we unwrap it, and then uh, actually let's turn off symmetry, we'll unwrap and then we'll flatten. Uh, you can see it's kind of warping the UVs where I painted those uh, density maps. It would, it's going to enlarge those UV areas and then where I paint the um, attract area maps, it'll, uh, you know, and then it attracts your seam. So you can see here it didn't have that UV shell, it didn't break it off, it just split it along that seam I gave it. Uh, it looks kind of warbled because I did paint that density map. So that doesn't make a whole lot of sense on a cylinder, I understand, but just a couple cool things you can do in there. Cool. I'm glad uh, you uh, like those videos. Um, Arifindbo. <laughs> like these names are really difficult to pronounce. Um, I do use Shadow Box. I've been doing a ton of weapon concepting lately. And I've been using Shadow Box a bit for that. Um, we'll probably do some weapon concepting coming up here. I'll try and streamline it for you guys and try and figure out a nice, uh, elegant way to create these weapons. There's some interesting ways to do it in ZBrush. There's a ton of ways to do a lot of things in ZBrush. That's why I like that program so much. Um, uh, yeah, we can do nano mesh making scale. Speaking of nano mesh, um, we went over this last time as well. On my playlist here, right up at the top, there's a nano tile. We went through the knurling. Uh, a couple times on this channel. So if you go through the Twitch TV channel on there, you'll see, uh, as well as the Twitch TV for this channel here, which I can throw you guys that. So they update these afterwards. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, what you do with these weapons afterwards is up to you guys, but I don't, luckily none of my weapons are ever gonna be functional since I'm, I'm not that good. Uh, but uh, yeah, you can uh, check those out. And um, all that cool stuff. Yeah, check out Sculptress too. Um, if Sculptress is fun for me. I don't use it for production, but it's definitely cool to kind of get in there and just start sculpting some stuff. So, and it's check that out. That's another awesome program. Um, cool. Oh man, you can make your own chest. And in fact, I think that's a really a, that's a really interesting way to um, to start. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do some chest pieces today because I think that'll be funner than a glove. <laughs> and we'll get back to the glove next time. Um, as far as nano meshing scales, uh, I mean, we could just do it to this thing. So we go to insert multiple edge loops here. And what we're basically going to want to do with nano mesh is also break this object up into poly groups where we want, for example, the scales to go. If we want the scales to go where these things are, I'm just going to use uh, Control Shift and Visibility to isolate those poly groups. I can hit Control W um, to make it all one poly group. Now, just like knurling, if you wanted to offset the scales, it might be better for you to actually leave two separate groups. So you could put a scale on one and have it show up and then offset these uh, every other poly group here. Um, but if you didn't want that to happen, you could just make this all in poly group. And uh, sometimes poly groups look similar. I'm just hitting control W, which is group mask, clear mask. So if you have a mask here and hit control W, it'll, ma it'll poly group that. Um, but if you have nothing masked or anything just visible, it'll just polygroup that. Um, but you know what? That's actually, let's go back to this one here. We'll keep it like this. And as far as scales go, uh, it should be pretty straightforward. I don't know what kind of scales you would want specifically, but what we can do is just really quickly, we'll grab a sphere. And uh, before I drop this thing, I'm gonna, it's an initial, initialized primitive state. So I'm going to go... Um, our H and V divides here, I'm going to drop these both down to like 12. Whenever you're doing nano mesh stuff, try and keep it as low as you possibly can because if you're going to be making thousands of instances of these things, you want to make sure that, uh, you know, you can handle it. And you can also dynamically subdivide these later on. So you don't need to make it super high res here, you can do it later. So we'll make it a polymesh 3D. 
and we'll go through here and kind of shrink this down. Now if we want to give these a vaguely scale shape, I'm going to hit X to turn on transform, uh, activate symmetry across the X axis here. And now I can just use move to kind of pull these out into a vaguely um, scalish shape. Now if I want one side of the scale to like bubble out and the other side to be flat here, what I can do, and you can turn off line and fill over here on under, under polyframe just in case you didn't know that, but I can kind of bubble this scale out. And then if I want to flatten this back end, we can go in here with our clip, control shift, and just change that to a clip here. Um, if you don't particularly like this geometry, like if we go and hit D to do our dynamic subdiv preview, which is under geometry here, you're going to see, uh, you know, polarized ends can sometimes pinch a little bit. So what we can do, let's do shift D to turn that dynamic off temporarily. We can go over here to our Z rim mesher and we can say ZBrush, give us some nicer geometry. It's pretty low res here. So I'm going to say, keep it the same. We'll change our adaptive size down to zero just to get nice even quads. Um, not quite enough here. Let's go ahead and let's do, I'm going to just do my select lasso. I'm going to hold down control shift and just select. If you have select lasso, you can just grab these rings here. Let's say, there we go. So I can just go through here and just kind of isolate uh, these rings. Whoa. I must have went through here. Uh, so now in this one here, I can just isolate that one edge ring, go into auto groups, which is under here, poly groups, auto groups, and that'll give you poly groups here. If I want to change these ones to be the same, one easy way is just to isolate this poly group, control shift, click, control shift X to expand, control W, and now we've got two poly groups here. So now in IZ Remesh, I can go keep my groups, don't smooth my groups, and then um, see if that'll keep it a little more um, let's also turn on double here. There we go. That's a nice looking scale. So we got some new geo and this one will, um, this one will go through here. If we hit D, it'll smooth a lot nicer here. So now that we've got a scale sitting out here, we can go back to what were we putting scales on our weirdo cylinder here. There we go. Um, one thing you might consider is uh, if we go into our Z modeler brush and we do like insert nano mesh, on all polygroups, so polygroup all, and then we just drag that out. You're going to see by default it's a um, cube. If you hit M, you have access to anything you've thrown out here, like a cylinder, for example. And you're going to notice that you know these ones are pointing these way. Uh, they're all pretty uniform. Uh, one thing I like to do, though, just in case, is go to Geometry, Edge Loop. And then under edge loop, I like to do um, align loops. Uh, you can do that when you go into your nanomesh properties down here in the nanomesh menu. You can actually go through under alignment, say align to normal and align to short edge, long edge, point order, random edge, all that good stuff, and no alignment. Um, just makes everything a little bit more predictable. Uh, but of course, we don't want to drag out a cylinder. We want to drag out a scale. So over this polygroup here, insert nanomesh, polygroup all, hit M and just select our scale here. So now we can just go through here and just put our scale on there. And then over the nanomesh properties here, we can say um, Z rotation. Let's zero out any rotations we have. And now we can kind of, let's see if we want to rotate this up. And then we'll rotate this around here. There we go. So we can kind of just line these things up. So we'll do negative 90 in the X rotation and 90 in the Z rotation. And we can also, if we want it to fit right in that polygon, we can say we want to fit that polygon and go ahead and uh, change our size to one and that'll fit it within that polygon. I might have to do a little offset here in the Y or Z. There we go. Or we can do fill with a scale of one and that'll kind of fill it and then you might need to play with your height or your length here but we'll do fit and if you want to kind of rotate these out so they're kind of sitting up and on top of let's try a little nope a little more x rotation and then we'll do a z offset nope and y offset x offset there we go so you can kind of have these scales flare out. So if we like these scales, all we got to do is go in here to this nanomesh, insert nanomesh, polygroup all. Uh, we have our scale selected already. So I can go ahead and drag that out. Now, instead of doing all those settings again, and if you need to, you can hold down shift while you're dragging these things out. Um, actually, you know what? Because we did that offset, um, it kind of moved them up a polygroup here. That's a little bit confusing, but what you can do is go here to the index. You can copy those settings, go down here and paste those settings. 
and um, now we can do on our offsets here we should be able to offset that by one and that'll kind of go through and kind of stagger them a little bit and of course you can change your length and height and width variances and all that good stuff and start tiling your scales or inflating them if you like them you can go here and say one to mesh and just duplicate all these off and inflate them up and all that good stuff cool um, yeah we can see what that's all about um, rotate an object's orientation and insert mesh brush after the brush has already been created um, and 47 p3 I'm trying you know let's see orientation I think is set you can do multiple so like when I do my brushes here I do you know I have a cylinder that faces towards me and a fill in the cylinder that faces uh, away from me and then a cylinder that faces away from me like this so if I do want to do that I can go like insert a cylinder like this and then I can also hit M and insert a cylinder like this so you can do you can capture both uh, but yeah once you've captured that orientation and insert mesh brush I think it's kind of set to my knowledge I, I could be wrong um, but if we want to make these, let's say one to mesh, one to mesh, and now we've got these scales as separate polygroups here, so I can just isolate them with Control Shift. And I also kept our polygroups here, so we'll do Control Shift, Control Shift A, and then we'll do a split here. And then with these ones here, like I said, you can go through and inflate these things or any sort of stuff that you want to do. To, and this looks more like roof shingles, but you, you get the point. Um, yes, this, the, all the videos will be archived on the, um, what's it called? <laughs> on uh, the Pixelogic channel. Um, oh, perfect. Okay, so this weave here, Joseph Drust actually already did that for you. Let me see. Um, it would be called Nanotile. Let's see, because that is exactly, there we go, this one right here. So that weave you just had, here is Joseph Dress doing pretty much the exact same thing using his Nanotile plugin. So on my channel, I go through the Nanotile plugin to kind of just scatter some seeds around and do poly paints and uh, capture that kind of thing. And right there in that video, you can go through and do that, um, that weave there. I would do it, but I'd probably mess it up, and he's already got a beautiful video to kind of go ahead and show that, so check that one out oh thank you 3d printed Aspie yeah you can find all that good stuff um, let's see good 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 and if I miss your question I apologize I'm just kind of scrolling through right here to make sure I don't can't, uh, miss anything here um, yeah cool cool everybody good all right okay so I've got that We've got, um, okay, and then, uh, yeah, so yeah, that's a really cool piece you got there. Uh, let me see if I can find that here. Uh, buh, 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 buh. I'm losing links already. My brain's already starting to go. Um, yeah, that's a really cool thing, uh, Andrews. Uh, it's, that's really cool. It's a really nice render, really tight. And uh, we can go into hard edge modeling too, but... Let's get back to, because we'll do a little bit of hard edge modeling, let's get back to those chess pieces, because I am intrigued by these chess pieces. We can do some really cool stuff with this. So we'll start simple, and we'll do, you know, a pawn, you know, a pawn, the bishop. Uh, forgive me if I miss these names, queen, king, and not the knight, because that's going to be the horsey. The rook is the castle, I think. So if we want to go and make some of these things, we're going to go to, uh, I guess we'll start with a cylinder here. Uh, we can go through make a cylinder 3d go into edit mode and when you go into polyframe if it's white usually that means it's either a subtractive mesh for your dynamesh which we'll get to in a bit or it's in its initialized uh, state so because it's not a p pm 3d poly mesh 3d it's just a cylinder here you can go to initialize and if you wanted to kind of thin this thing out you could do like x size of 50 and then um let's do y size of 50 uh, Z size you can change here. You can just do the slider and you can squash it down or stretch it out. If you want to change these H divides, you can make it more round or less round. I usually like to work with like 12 or 16 or 8. So we'll go ahead and make it 12 here. Actually, let's make it 16. And V divides, uh, you can get rid of those lines, like I said, or you can just delete them later. Uh, we'll 
keep it. We'll go ahead and get delete them because we can always insert mul uh, multiple lines later and we'll initialize. Once we're done with that, we can make polymesh 3D and now this thing is editable. Um, so if you wanted to really quickly just model this thing, you know what, let's bring it in. Let's go to save image as, I'm gonna go to my desktop here and I'm gonna go to texture, import, desktop, chess, texture, select it at the spotlight here and I can just use this as a reference image I can kind of scale it down or move it around so we'll start with the pawn here like so and we can go okay let's make these uh, a little dimmer I'll hit Z to go out of spotlight mode so now I can just use this as reference for what I'm trying to make here so uh, let's see I would be inclined there's a couple different ways to go about this I would actually be inclined to maybe even sculpt these things and Z remesh it just to make it a little bit quicker but if you wanted to do model this thing we go to insert single edge loop and we can start putting in loops where we want these cuts to be so this is where um, a loop is going to go out here so I would want to you know go around and inflate that one I would want to cut in here I would want to bring these ones in here and then I'll just put a circle on top I think that'll be a little bit easier um, so if you move this one out now these ones even still I might also be inclined to do insert multiple edge loops interactive elevation and then as I pull this out is it going to let me let me do shift Z here interactive elevation uh, another thing if I do shift Z here once I have this thing set you can use uh, actually let's set it like if you set it here and I guess I stopped it here. So I can I can chop that top off and we can uh, go from there. So I'll set it here. Uh, if I wanna get that camera view back, you can set it in the movie um, if you want to. Another easy way is go to document here, zap link properties and just do like custom one or front. And that'll go ahead and set those for you. So if I do interactive elevation, I can go ahead and start pulling this stuff out and adding uh, rings or pulling it in. Um, I can also go through here and I can mask, control click to invert that mask, hit W to go into my uh, transpose mode. If I hit that, um, white circle and then I can go straight up it should allow me to um, you know find the center of that unmasked area here and then snap my transpose line so I can go through here now and I can like scale this stuff in and out as needed um, I can also do that with an individual line so I can mask this line and then uh, click that one and we can go ahead and I wonder why it doesn't want to make it straight here and go through here and just start scaling this stuff down. I can also, if we want, let's see if we can do this. I'm gonna take this line here and I'm gonna go to the scale edge loop complete. And if I scale this down, it'll actually go through and scale down. So that's probably my best bet. So I'll hit custom one to snap it back, shift Z. And we can go through here and just start scaling this stuff um, down and around this object here to kind of shrink wrap it. And then for these ones, if I wanna scale it out, I can, uh, I'll scale this one out and then, oops, don't want to do nano mesh. Now, if you are going through and just doing edge operations and you don't want to be bothered by face stuff, you can hover over a face and say, do nothing. You can hover over a point and say, do nothing. And now you'll have um, a little bit more control over just your edge properties here. So we can go through here and we can do another insert single edge loop here. So we can insert another edge loop. I'm having a hard time seeing that here. Let's make this bigger, and then I'll make this bigger here. I'll also hit Control W to um, make it a little bit brighter here. And then I can do clear all views, and now I can save another custom view here for this one. Now I can see a little bit better. So we'll go to Insert Single Edge Loop here, and we can scale this in, we can scale this one in. We'll go back to our Scale Edge Loop Complete here, and we'll scale this in. And let's go ahead and do, we'll do another insert. So what I'm basically doing is just protecting this bottom piece here. And now when I go to insert multiple edge loops, I can fan this out and start adding resolution here. And then go back to this one. We'll go back to scale and we'll kind of pull this one in. So we got that one here. Um, we'll go ahead and put in another insert single. And we'll go ahead and protect that bottom one. Now if you want to, you can also slide um, edge loop complete and you can slide up and down through your geometry here and we can kind of slide it along there and then we'll go back to insert multiple with interactive elevation and then this one here I think we'd need to probably scale this one down so let's go ahead and go back to scale here and we'll push that one in 
and then this one will flare way out. Insert. Um, if we want a little bit more control, if I have a feeling if I go to insert multiple edge loops and flare this out, it's going to be very, oh, you know what, that's not bad at all. Um, you could do an insert single edge loop, bevel that, and then scale that as needed. And then this whole top part we don't even really need here. So what I'm going to do is hold down control shift, drag over that, and that'll just get that top piece here. If I do control shift and then alt, that'll get rid of that. We can go ahead and do a delete hidden, which is geometry modified topology delete hidden. We go ahead and cap this thing. We'll go ahead and do a close convex hole and just kind of cap it here. And just to clean up these poly groups a little bit, what I'm going to do is you can go to your poly group menu and do a group by normals. And that'll go ahead and just look at your normal angle. But by default, the normal angle is 45. And now we've got this piece going. Uh, if I want to insert a sphere on top of this one, you can go to BI brush insert sphere. You can just drag that out. Um, or you can go into your custom menu. I have a custom menu here. I'll just do a simpler sphere here. We'll do shift Z to get rid of that one. And we'll just kind of drag that sphere on there. Now to match those up, we'll bring this back. We'll go back to our camera view. We'll hit scale, E, and then we'll just kind of match that up. So now if I do, and we'll kind of push that in a little bit, I think, with W. Good enough. So now that we've got this here, we can go ahead, we can hit D, and that'll give us our dynamic preview. Oh, Pepper's going crazy. She gets to go on a walk. Um, if I do, let's go ahead and do our crease tolerance here. I'm going to drop that down. Oh, so your crease menu is over here and the, the geometry menu. Uh, we'll hit crease and then we'll hit D and then we can kind of compare it. So it looks like these get creased here. This one doesn't get creased. It actually did a really good job. This one might need a little bit of a bevel. So what we can do is we can either go through here. If I hit shift D and this is the uh, dynamic, where's that at? There we go. So if we D turns that on, shift D turns that off. You can go through here and if you want a, a very severe bevel, not severe, but you can kind of go through here and bevel this out, increase by polygroup, or you know, insert multiple edge loops with interactive elevation and round that corner out. Alternatively, if you don't need a super uh, big bevel there, if we hit D and we go to dynamic here, you're gonna see we have a smooth, this just gives you a preview. Instead of going up here and hitting control D, which gives you real subdivisions, and then now you can't go back in and Z modeler because if you try and, um, Z model over here, it's going to yell at you that it has subdivision levels. Um, so you'd have to do crazy free subdivisions to level stuff to get that to work. So instead of doing that, you can just hit D to get a preview of it. And you can even uh, go through here and do like, okay, I want to see what it looks like if I hit control D four times. And there it goes. It gets even smoother. You can also go down here to your crease menu and you can set your crease level. So if we set this crease level to like two, and our smooth subdivision is a four. If I do shift D to turn it off and then D again, you'll see that it goes through and it gives you a preview of what it would look like if you hit control D twice with crease on, uncreased everything, and then hit control D two more times. And that'll give you these really nice bevels. And again, if I change that crease level up to 15 and then I do shift D and D, you're gonna see it's razor sharp all the way through. Drop it down to like, you know, less than what your smooth is. We'll do shift D and D. And now we have really nice um, uh, bevels on there. So that's one way to do it if you wanted to go the Z modeler route. Uh, we'll do a sculpty one uh, next. Everybody's still good? Sorry, I was lost in Z modeler there. Cool, cool, cool. And let me let me grab a piece of paper here. And um, all this technology, and uh, I'm going to grab a piece of paper because it's probably a little bit faster than me. Well, okay. I don't have a pen. All right, I'm going to type it out. Give me a second here. I'll go to my stream topics there, just in case. Cool, cool, everybody good? Rook, yes, thank you. <laughs> um, cool, cool, cool. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, back at this, cool, everybody's good. Uh, lathe. Okay, let me get back to my CAD. It's been a while since I've lathed something. That's when you pass a shape along a curve. Yeah, yeah, you can. Uh, with curve brushes, you can pass, you can go really crazy. Um, is, uh, let me make sure. I want to get my terminology right. Okay, yeah, so you make a curve. Okay, in this case, you make a curve and you rotate it around. Hmm. 
off the top of my head with a curve you could slice it and you could do clip curve and you could do sculpting let's do let's do that next um, I don't know that I have a really good answer for the lathe part if somebody else wants to chime in you could definitely um, do that but one thing you can do if we uh, you know what let's do the castle next so this one we won't Z modeler um, actually this one will probably be better so we'll do this bishop here I think that's what he is so for this one uh, we could actually steal this base if we wanted to so we can go over here to sub tool we'll duplicate this one off and then if we do custom here we can kind of line up whoops make that the right size sorry uh, we'll push this over here and since this one's duplicated, we've got this one here. I can scale this up as needed. Um, keep moving that around. So I can go to the bottom here. We'll do Shift D, and then I'm just going to tap the bottom there to find that surface normal and kind of anchor it there. And now we can kind of just go through here, and I can scale this thing up. And you can add more loops as you need to and all that good stuff, and then replace this ball uh, with this bishop thing here. So, uh, you know what, let's, let's just do a quick variant. So I'm going to go through here. I'm going to go ahead and split that piece off and then for this one here if we alt tap this one I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of these I'm gonna go to insert single edge loop and hold down alt and then we can just kinda of delete those loops there and then I'm going to put in a single edge loop insert single edge loop right about here and then when I do insert multiple edge loops it'll kinda of force it to kinda of stay contained to that area there um, this one uh, looks like I need to move this down. So I'm going to mask this and then use W to kind of move this down here. Although, if we wanted to, I guess we can just do that. So let's hide that ball temporarily. I'm going to take this middle section here and I'm going to make it its own polygroup just by holding down, uh, hovering over a face, do Q mesh. And then we're going to hold down Alt to mark these. And I'm just going to pull up with Q mesh brush. And now we've got that. This is a really good exercise. I, I should probably do this more often because uh, I don't have a really, I'm just kind of winging it as I go through. There's probably better ways to do this, but for what it's worth, we'll do insert multiple edge loops here and kind of pull that out like so. And then, you know, you can keep adding more um, like that. Uh, now, with, we, if we bring the ball back and we move this up and we'll select the ball, now we can kind of go through here and kind of force this into the shape of our uh, character here. Now before I do that, what I would probably do is go up here to transform. And while I'm using my move brush, if we activate symmetry in the Y with radial on, we can move in all axes at once. So if I go through here, at least I know as I'm moving these things, it's happening to all the axes all at once there. So we can kind of move those into place here. And it looks like this one, we might need to do a negative insert multiple. So we can kind of scale this down here something like that and again I'm trying to keep these simple so when I do my interactive elevation I'm not inter you know I'm not doing like a million I'm just trying to keep it nice and controlled so when I go in and subdivide uh, it's not too much to handle if I want to go through and modify these things that's good uh, so we've got this and then you add a squash ball on the top pretty easy stuff and then I'll merge these down which is under your merge menu down here in your sub tool there you go and you can um, Go ahead and sculpt that thing. Now, if we did want to do a completely sculpted one, I'm going to duplicate this one off here. I'm going to do Control Shift, and I'm just going to get rid of all of that. Just hold down Alt, Delete Hidden, and now I'm going to do Q Mesh, uh, Polygroup, All is fine. In this case, I'm just going to pull up, and you're going to see it comes in flipped. The normals are flipped. If I had pulled down, normals would be fine, but since I pulled up, it flipped the normals. So just go down here to Display Properties and then flip those around and now I've just got a cylinder base that I can then go through here let's hit Z and I'll move this thing around and you can do any any of these are fine if we're gonna be sculpting maybe this will be a fun one the horse here will be kind of interesting so if you wanted to just completely skip the whole Z modeler thing and maybe have um, Z remesh do the heavy lifting for you what you can do is just set up a cylinder here and then we can go to, um, let's go ahead and subdivide this thing so it's nice and smooth. I'm going to hit Shift Z here. And uh, it's already creased for me, but if it wasn't, you could just go to your geometry crease menu over here. And you could drop your crease tolerance down. Or you could do crease PG, which will crease all of your polygroups here. 
And now when we hit D for our dynamic, um, what will that do it? Let's see, increase PG. There we go. And I'll go ahead and uh, let's see. Oh, you know what? We have our crease level still set at two, so I'm going to crank that up to 15. Shift D and D. There we go. So I'll keep it really nice and creased there. Uh, if we like this, we can go ahead and say apply those subdivisions, and now we have actual subdivisions here. Uh, but in this case, what I'm going to do is go ahead and I'm going to turn off project, turn off blur, which will be under Dynamesh here. Turn off project, turn off blur. Crank my resolution up just a bit, and I'm going to hit Dynamesh. Um, no, I don't want to keep my subdivision levels. So now that this thing is Dynamesh, and that just basically changes, uh, fills in really nice sculptable geometry on here. Uh, so we'll turn on Z-Ad back for RGB here. So now we can go through here and just start sculpting this thing in radial symmetry, which, again, if I had transform, radial count, and the Y, um, we'll crank that up as high as it'll go. And now we can just use our sculpting tools to kind of go through here and add um, kind of ridges and bumps and stuff like that. Let me go ahead and let me see if I can occasionally... There we go, up to 100. I just made it a Polymesh 3D again, and that forced it into the radio kind of 100, which is what I was looking for. So now um, you can go through here, and now you can use your standard brush to kind of start uh, carving this thing in. And let's go ahead and turn off our lazy mouse here. You can hit L to turn that off. And now you can use Shift to smooth. Um, if you want to, you can grab Smooth Stronger, which we've talked about before. And then you can use your clay brush and hold down Alt. And so you can kind of just go through here um, it's not like a, you, you're not making a curve to make your shape, uh, but you are going through here and kind of using your sculpting tools to kind of go through and like smooth this thing out and hold down um, Alt with the standard brush and kind of just go through here and make these shapes really quickly. So once you've done that, um, oh, I also had, um, might have had RGB turned on for one of these. Yeah, Shift, I had RGB turned on so it actually painted, which is another thing you can do if you want to. You can go into your standard brush here, RGB, and you can go through here, and let's turn off X, and we can just go through and, like, paint, you know, whatever you want through this, and you can kind of paint your reference on there if you want to. So I'll go ahead and turn Colorize off. Um, and we're also, what we're sculpting through is actually sculpting, so what I'm going to do is just do a quick um, cleanup pass. I'll just go through here and kind of smooth this stuff out, and then hold down Alt as I'm... Ah, turn Z add back on for our our standard brush here. And it looks like we may have lost symmetry as we we're going through. I can kind of get that back if I go into geometry modify topology. I'm gonna mirror and weld this in the X and Z. There we go. And that's under geometry modify topology. So you can kind of instead of going through and Z modeling this thing, you can go through here and just use your sculpting brushes to kind of get these shapes. And you can go through and use, um, what would it be called, uh, Trim Dynamic. Oh, I have Local Symmetry on, which I probably don't want on in this case. Sorry about that. So as I was painting through, so maybe don't use Spotlight <laughs> as your reference. Or if you are using it as a reference, what you can do is, uh, where was that option at? Uh, if you're just using it as reference and you don't, because what ends up happening is if I go into standard brush and I have Z-Add on, anywhere where it's dark, it's actually going to pass an alpha through your object there. So what you might want to do is under the brush settings here, there's a, oh boy, it took me a while to, f oh, there we go, spotlight, <laughs> found it fast. Uh, brush samples, turn off spotlight projection, and now you can just use that. Uh, and you can actually sculpt outside of spotlight if you'd like as well. And this way, when you sculpt through, it's not going to pick up anything. So that's that was my mistake. That was a little bit sloppy on my part. Um, but it turned out okay. And if we do Shift-Z here, let's go ahead and we'll do duplicate this off. And speaking of shadow box... Let's do a little bit of shadow box work. So the reason I duplicated this off is because shadow box is going to completely obliterate this shape here. So um, we can go into shadow box and then get that general shape and kind of extrude that uh, as we needed to. Make sure I don't miss anything here. Um, cool, cool, cool. Um, everybody good? Oh, awesome. Thanks, uh, Till2D. Hopefully, uh, I mean, I'll keep coming out with uh, videos as I can. 
live streaming is kind of nice too. I live stream here on Pixelogic on my channel just to kind of, you know, work through problems and kind of have a little bit of fun. Uh, is it better to start with Z modeler from low to high or from a real sculpt as I am constrained in any other ways? Um, you can, I would say both, you know, whatever makes more sense to you. Sometimes if I'm trying to get my idea out, sculpting's a little bit faster. If I know exactly what I'm making, Z modeler is nice. Um, but luckily, you can have the best of both worlds. Let me show you how that goes. Um, so through here, we do have polygroups here. Uh, what I can do is I can do group my normals, probably not going to work really well on this thing. But I can go through here, hold on control shift, I'm going to do trim curve, and that's going to throw a polygroup on the top here, and on the bottom here, it's going to go ahead, it's basically slicing and uh, getting rid of those. So now we got a polygroup here, a polygroup here, and then the rest of this here, let's go ahead and invert that. So we've got this one, oh, and we've got two of these things on, that's probably why it looks weird. Um, so we're going to go here, invert that here, and then I'm going to hit control W here. So now what we can do on this thing is we can say, okay, ZBrush, I sculpted this thing out, but I want something that a little more Z modelery. So we can go down here to geometry, or it's simplified, I should say. We'll go to Z remesher here, and we'll say uh, adapt to size down to zero, I think will be okay. The more you crank up adapt to size, the more it builds an edge loop where their surface changes, um, but we'll change that. And because I messed up and made it not symmetrical, it's gonna have a, hopefully it'll, it'll fix it. Uh, but we can do, and also if you have symmetry turned on, it'll do it symmetrically. But uh, we'll go ahead and do adapt to size down to zero. Uh, modify to pi, we're good. So we'll do Z remesh, or we're at 177,000, so I'm going to say our target polygon count of five is fine. And then just hit Z remesh. Oops, I forgot to hit keep groups. I'm going to hit escape, do keep groups, turn off smooth groups, and now it'll keep a nice solid line around the tops and the bottoms here. And then go ahead and Z remesh this. Let that do its thing. And because we have a copy of this, so now we've got simplified geometry here with our caps that we can simplify later, uh, we can go through and turn this other one on. And as we go, we can just go through with subtool project all and pro just project our geometry back to our original here. We'll go into solo mode. And if that's too much, we'll go half, half, half. Just keep going half as many times as you'd like. Um, if you don't like these caps, we can just replace them. So I'm gonna control shift click this one. We'll do delete hidden, and actually I think we went half one too far. There we go, that's a good one. So we'll go ahead and um, do geometry modified topology delete hidden, and then again we'll go to this closed convex hole. We'll just go ahead and cap these things like so. And now you can hit control W for these. So a little bit more simplified geometry. Then we can go in here to like crease polygroup, hit D for dynamic subdiv. Then you can go through here. If you want this one creased or beveled, you can go like bevel edge loop complete. And you can like, you know, tighten up these lines or crease those lines as needed to kind of get the shape you want. So you can do both. You can sculpt it out and you can have Z, ZBrush give you new topology on top of that. Or you can just go into a Z modeler and do that there. Uh, Yarev, can you show us the motorcycle modeling tips, wheels, four candle bars? Um, I can give that a shot. I'm not terribly good good at that kind of stuff. I can go back through your email. Let me make a note for that if we have time before I get these chess pieces done. There it is. I can look at that. Might be more general um, advice. Uh, it's been a while since I've done like super smooth organic car stuff. Um, it would probably end up being like that one link I sent you where let me bring that up. It would be um, Pixel Logic Panel Loops Automobile, Z classroom, vehicle design. Yeah, this is a good one. So we'll go back to introduction here. So this is what I was talking about for everybody else too on the Pixelogic classroom. There's a cool vehicle design with panel loops. Um, I did a panel loops walkthrough, I think. Panel loops basics. Yeah, if you wanna if you wanna hear me drone on about it, there's there's my panel loops here. But click on the first one. That's the vehicle design uh, one that'll do really really nice quick organic shapes um, for that. Uh, yeah, projection master. That's a good one. Um, I'll ch check that out because you can uh, with projection master you can have it go through and you can uh, put in primitives that way and kind of have it snap. 
And uh, also as you're passing, as you're sculpting lines around, instead of doing it, um, for example, let's do, let's go back to our, oh, this was our sculpted one. We'll go back to this one here. So instead of going through here, and if we have X symmetry turned on, instead of doing this, what you could do is snap it to the side here. Ooh, it's been a while. Go into Projection Master. We're going to do Deformation, Normalize, Double-Sided, so it goes all the way around the object here. Um, yeah, Deformation, Normalized. Uh, 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 yeah, I want it to go all the way around. Double-Sided, Fade, make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Um, sure. And then uh, as we go through, now we've got an alpha here. So if I pass this through, we can start sculpting um, on the object. Uh, but what I'm going to do here is let's do as a line. Uh, we have Z add. I'm going to turn RGB off. I'm going to do Z add. And we just pass a line straight through. And then once you've done that, you can hit W. And you can have the ability to move this thing in or out. Change your Z intensity, I believe. Go to Z add to Z sub. And then once you're good, uh, if we just do Z add here, and we go out of Projection Master. It'll go through and uh, project that all. Now, again, I think this is off center here, so that's that's my mistake. Um, but yeah, Projection Master would be a good one to kind of go and pass through. And even if you wanted to do, like, even and bring in new meshes and have that uh, duplicate around, and it'll project through as well. It's been a while since I've used Projection Master, but you could definitely use that. Uh, and again, if I miss any of this stuff, just uh, let me... Let me know. I uh, just keep keep saying it. And I'll I'll get to it. Um, for each division step, do you have to project all, or is the same to do the projection after all the subdivisions? Um, I would only project all if you, because when you're averaging vertices or simplifying geometry, it can tend to kind of melt your object. So if you do project all um, in between each one of them, it could kind of just keep forcing that form back out. Um, but really, you could also just go through here and. Um, even on this one, this other one we had here, subtool. There we go. So on this one here, if you wanted to, you could you could go into Z Modeler and be like, yeah, you can go through each one of these loops and do the whole like scale edge loop complete and do all that kind of good stuff. And you can also just go through with your inflate brush and um, radial symmetry, and you could just go through it's just geometry. So if you wanted to like smooth or inflate or carve in, you know, it's still it's just simplified geometry, so you can still absolutely use that stuff to your advantage here. Um, if, but and again, if we want to, we can turn off X here. Let's go ahead and like crease as it look complete here. We're going to crease that up like so, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, and actually, uh, once you have a crease in there, if you're so inclined, let's say we wanted to crease like here, here, and here, um, and you didn't want to, or for some reason you wanted to bevel those, instead of going in here and changing like this to... Uh, crease level of three and a smooth subdivision level of four just to kind of even those out. Actually, let's do crease level of two. That kind of softens those transitions. Uh, what you could do instead is wherever you have anything creased, you can go to the crease menu here. Uh, crease menu and you can do uh, bevel and then everywhere you have a crease, it'll put a bevel in there and you can change the bevel width as you go. So you can see where all those creases were. We just added a bevel in there. And then, then, then that way it could be your new geo, and you can kind of control it as actual geo as opposed to um, a dynamic preview. But if you do the dynamic preview, you can always hit apply, and that'll give you the actual geo as well. Um, but yeah, I do a ton of hard surface block out. In fact, all my hard surface stuff I block out in ZBrush first just to kind of get my ideas out, and then I rebuild as needed from there. Uh, miss anything else? Uh, yes, uh, thanks for showing up, Dream Zion. It is live. Just making sure I'm just kind of going through the, the chat right now and making sure I don't miss anything here. But we were talking about, so we'll keep this one here. And I'm going to, um, what was I talking about? We're going to do Shadow Box here. So I'm going to do Shift Z. So we've got our base here. We're going to replace this mesh here with a Shadow Box. And again, because I, I duplicated it off so that I could. Uh, do shadow box here. So I'm going to change this one to uh, geometry. And we're going to go to shadow box here and we'll just turn this into a shadow box. Now, when I did that, 
what it did was replace, go out of solo mode here, it replaced my geometry with these four boxes here that we can go through and mask, and then we have geometry sitting here in the middle. So I'm gonna go through my transform, and we're gonna turn off radial symmetry. We'll keep X symmetry on, but turn radial symmetry off. And uh, so now here's the back here. So see how we're in X symmetry here, which means our side is over here. So if I go out of, so here's our shadow box, here's our base, we're out of solo mode here. And where did this, okay, this is on the inside here. So what we're gonna do is actually, let's move the shadow box up. I'm gonna control drag to get rid of that mask. I'm gonna go into transparency mode and I'm gonna need to rearrange the shadow box. So I'm gonna move it up and we're gonna give ourselves enough space for the shadow box to fit the whole horse head on there. So what I should be able to do is just size this thing up. So I'm gonna to go to my deformations and size and just crank that up. And that for you guys, that'll be deformations down here. Um, and now what I can do, uh, I can either just start masking. I can hold down control and just start masking here and that'll start creating geometry for me. Or if I feel like it, I can turn on RGB and I can just paint. Oh, we need to go back to our brush settings as we turn that functionality off. Um, brush, not auto masking, it is uh, samples. We're gonna turn on spotlight projection and now we can paint our spotlight reference right onto that mesh here. So now really quickly, um, you know what would be interesting? Let's do it this way. So because we have a white background, this will this will be fun. So we can go ahead and just like, pay, okay, poly painting, poly painting. And um, let's go ahead and clean this up. I'm gonna hit C to sample that color. And then with RGB turned on, I can just go ahead and paint white. And uh, you know what? I'm gonna mask this back here, invert that mask, and we're just gonna go to color, fill object, and just fill that with white as well. And same thing for the bottom here. We're going to mask this out, invert that, and then I'm gonna do my hotkey for color fill. So basically what I'm doing is I'm gonna use my RGB to make my mask, but I'm gonna let ZBrush do the hard work for me. So I'm gonna go down here to Pepper's back. Let's go to masking. We're gonna do mask by color, mask by intensity. And if I go down here and turn off my poly paint, you're gonna see wherever the RGB was intense, it masked it. So if I do control alt, I can you know start modifying this mask as needed. Um, but instead what I'm gonna do is let's do uh, mask by intensity. And I'm gonna turn off my poly paint here. And I'm gonna go down here to mask adjust. And I'm gonna take this profile here and I'm gonna change this focal shift down to like negative 70 and hit apply. And that'll go ahead and mask, uh, you know, kind of make that masked a little bit better. So now I can do control alt and unmask this. So now when I go out of solo mode here, we've already got the shape of our horse set there. You can go to the back and like put a mask in like how thick you would want that horse. Or if you don't want to, you can just say, you know what? I'll do that manually later. Let's go ahead and say sh 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 geometry, shadow box, just turn off shadow box. That'll make it actual geo. And now we can go through here. We can either just scale this thing down. Um, actually, what does that chest piece even look like from the front? Um, I don't know. The side looks cool. I need a horsey from the front. I mean, I can wing it. Yeah, okay, we can just wing it. So it looks like it kind of the base kind of flares out. So what I would do is kind of keep the base flared out like this. And then to get the horse shape, what we can do, and again, this is just um, just geometry here. If you want to dynamesh it at this point, you can go ahead and do that. Turn off project, turn off blur. Go ahead and dynamesh this thing. We're in the X symmetry. So if I do a mirror and weld, oops, across X, it'll mirror and weld it for me. And now we can do control shift, go in here and we'll do a clip, I think. So he goes from like a pointy head horse and I'm gonna tap Alt once here and then Alt again, and we can kind of just clean this up and kind of flare out to that base here and kind of start getting that look. Um, now clip can sometimes, uh, you know, if we clip this straight back, it'll probably have an okay time as just kind of a cleanup method. Uh, but as soon as we introduced that flare and that curve, what it's doing is basically pulling those points straight back to, um, that line. So you're going to see there's a little bit of an overhang here. So in this case here, what I might try instead is to control shift. Um, we'll do trim curve. And what that's going to do is actually slice for me. 
and then delete and then fill hole. Although fill hole on the side, yeah, is going to have a little bit of a problem. Um, let's think about this. I mean, I guess we can just clean it up real quick. So we'll do, and also trim doesn't do across uh, symmetry there. Let's try this. And then uh, we can just dynamesh this thing again. And then uh, from, or you know what we else we can do? Let's, um, this might be a good one. Hold down Control Shift, hit Space Bar, turn on Poly Group. And now what we can do is add a new Poly Group. In fact, let's hit Control W to make this all one Poly Group. And then as we flare this base out, as we clip, it's going to give us a new Poly Group, like so. And then instead of dealing with that, I'm going to do Control Shift, isolate this piece here, uh, delete Hidden. And then I can just go over here to uh, Z Remesher, and we can kind of simplify the shape as well. So with this one just showing, um, let me run this really quick. I'm just going to polish my polygroup borders here. And now if we do zero measure, let's do adaptive size down to zero. We'll do 5K is fine. And we'll get some simplified geometry here. Let it go here. And we have X on, so it'll do um, symmetrical as well. We can just keep simplifying this geo here as needed. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn on display properties double. So now if I fill hole right now, it's probably going to have a hard time. So if we do like a close convex, let's do a quick save here. Uh, I did okay, but we still have a little bit of overlap. So we can kind of help it out. We can do like a bridge edges and we can kind of say you go to here, you go to here. And now when we close these holes, let's do close concave hole. That'll kind of fill those areas in, fill those areas in. You can do a mirror and weld. We can do um, group by normals. Or we can just isolate this. Control W, and then we'll crease poly group here. Control D a couple times, and then we can just re dynamesh this thing, I suppose. We still have our dynamesh set up, so a couple different ways you can do that. Um, let's see. Where do we end up? Um. Let's see here, Discord. Um, okay, actually for that one, let me see, I have a good part two Z modeler. Here we go. So for a military radio, if you go here on the Z classroom here, Joseph has a really good uh, modeling a radio part one and two. It's just a dynamesh and uh, basic shapes there, but that's a really good one uh, to kind of start you off as well. I've used some of those techniques on the on the uh, Molly, Molly and the Picatinny rails and stuff too as well. And you can also make, yeah, your own. Uh, actually here, if I go to, let's go to here, brush, uh, LM military. So I've got one here. So I made a curve brush uh, as line so I can actually make rails as needed here. So I can just kind of drop those in as I need. Uh, Seagull Crush, you concept out general shapes in Dynamesh, uh, and then Demodeler or go straight away to the poly mode. That just kind of depends on what I'm making. Um, oh, perfect, yeah, you got the radio one as well. Uh, let's say you extract something with a bit of thickness, to edit, take it out of your chest model and say you make some cuts in there with the top and bottom edge of the kill brush. When you dynamesh, how do you keep the edge surface as defined as possible? Um, that would probably be with, um, so like if we take an extraction, uh, you can clean up an edge and an ext extraction a number of ways. Uh, if you go back through the videos here, actually we go through it. Um, I have it a little bit more compartmentalized on mine because I, I can go through and do highlights. So on here, I'll just point you to, and we can go, we'll go over some of this as well, but I'll go to here, here, and we go over a lot of extraction and cleanup in this video here, hard surface excerpt. Check that one out. And that's just a ton of extraction and cleanup. So we'll do a little bit of that too. Um, I'm not sure if there's a Z classroom on chess pieces. There might be, it's a pretty fun kind of exercise to do for all this stuff. Yeah, and the ZBrush can make um, pretty much anything you'd ever want to make. Um, cool, cool. Slice poly paint. 
Um, <laughs> cool, yeah, all right. So uh, we got this thing here, so we can go ahead and we'll do Shift Z. And I didn't save that view here, but we can kind of go through and start cleaning this up either with just basically moving these pieces into place or using our clip brush like we've done. We have X turned on, yeah. So we can kind of just uh, go through here. Let's use our clip to kind of go through. And if you start clipping through here, it's going to want to clip through his face. So you can kind of protect his face with a mask here. Whoops. And then use Control Shift. We'll kind of clip these shapes back a little bit and then we'll invert that mask. And you can tap Alt to do this. You can also go into like clip circle and we can kind of go through here, hold down Alt, kind of clip this out. And uh, if you want to clip up, you can also mask this out, invert that mask. Let's do mask the tip of this ear here, invert that. And you can actually, um, you know, make this shape here. We'll double tap Alt once and we can kind of, ooh, it might be a little bit tight to do up there. You can kind of, you can just clip out to that uh, shape. So you can kind of put, you know, if you click, put your clip brush right here, it'll just pull out to that shape as well. Um, we'll go through here, we'll tap Alt. Oops, we made that mask, sorry. Alt once, Alt again. And if we can, uh, we also might be able to do a clip uh, rectangle. Sometimes clip rectangle can kind of add a little bit of this kind of stuff going on. So sometimes I'll just go through here and just tap Alt twice, and that'll kind of give me the general shape I'm looking for. And Dynamesh as you go, just to kind of make it a little bit easier on yourself. Let's go ahead and mask this, and then kind of clip this out, and we'll go ahead and clip his little mouth and his little nose. There we go, Control drag, Control drag, and uh, now I'll do Shift Z, and I can go through here, and I can just start, you know, do a little bit of cleanup sculpting, and go here with H Polish, and we can kind of just clean up this back. We can hold down Alt and make that transition a little less awkward on this side. Uh, we can continue to clip if we wanted to kind of refine this here. You can kind of just scale this out a bit. Kind of just clip through a little bit here and then the redynamesh and it makes his face look a little bit weird here. Um, but and again I can't find great reference as far as front and side views but we can kind of wing it here. Let's go in with our trim dynamic and we'll say, okay, here, it looks like it kind of cuts in a bit. And then back here, it looks like it kind of cuts in a bit. So I'm just going to use Trim Dynamic here to kind of just put some big old bevels on the side. And then we'll go to kind of a thinner bevel as we go up. And then to clean this up, I'm going to go to H Polish Brush. If you want to find this stuff, just B, H is H Polish Brush. B, T, uh, T, D is Trim Dynamic. And what we're basically doing is with Trim Dynamic, that will cut through surfaces and give us nice bevels. And then H Polish respects edges. So by using those two in conjunction with each other, you can kind of force this a little bit here. And then we can go through here with our move brush and kind of clean up these warbles a little bit. Um, and of course, you can Z-Remesh this later if you'd like. Make it as clean or just uh, you can rebuild it with Topology Brush or with Z-Sphere Retopology. All sorts of fun, cool stuff you can do to kind of make these shapes whatever you'd like. Um, let's go ahead and we'll put in, you know, he probably does have separate ears. So if we want to do separate those things out, um, let's do, let's go ahead and insert a cube. You can go BI brush insert cube. Um, I'm going to use my custom one here. I'm going to move this into place and I'm going to kind of scoot this one out, push this one in and uh, oops. Let's see, let's go across. So this one needs a midline here, so I'm just gonna do a quick mirror and weld. And now what I can do is scale this in. I'm just gonna basically use this to cut through my mesh here. So if I tap this surface normal, I can push it this way. Tap this surface normal, I can hold that shift and constrain it, push it this way. And we can go ahead and rotate this thing around. Now when I drag this out, if I would have held down Alt, it would automatically make it an insert sub. But since I didn't, uh, what I have to do is go to polygroups, group as insert sub. So down here in your polygroup menu, there's a uh, group as Dynamesh sub, which I should have in my custom. There we go. And now when I control drag, control drag again, it'll go ahead and just cut that out. Now I could have used clip rectangle, but like I said, sometimes it can leave a few artifacts. I'm going to drop my smooth intensity down just a bit. So we've got that there. And then we can again, we can go in here with like trim dynamic and let's start making like a little bit of a horse face here. So trim dynamic, H polish, 
go ahead and trim these things down just a bit. Kind of goes up and around and then down here. And you can use, um, so the move brush, we go over this every time, but we can use the move brush that kind of does this. It kind of just moves in a nice soft arc. If you go down here to curve, accu curve, you can move to points. You can kind of pull back to like a corner. So sometimes if you want to get um, like a, a very specific kind of straight line to a corner shape, you can kind of go through and do that kind of look here. And then of course you can just clean that up. Just go in here with H polish, redynamesh, all that good stuff. And uh, if you wanted to, you can go in with Damien standard and start cutting in details and then pulling up the details and then using clay brush to build up to those details and then H polish to kind of just refine those surfaces back down. If you're so inclined, it's kind of up to you, but we'll just keep it simplified here. And we got an eyeball on there. If we want to know exactly where that eyeball goes, we could paint it on there or we can go in with our clay brush and just kind of indicate where that goes. Um, in this case though, let's do it this way. So we've got our clay brush here. I'm going to clone this off. I'm going to go in a drag dot stroke, add an alpha. And now with that, what I can do is hold down alt and just kind of move this around. I'll make my focal shift negative 100 so it doesn't fade out the edges there. Crank up the Z intensity. And now I can just drag in a dot where I want that to go. So again, I'll do shift Z here. And we can just kind of go boom, 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 boom. Kind of drag in those things here. Now, if I want to fill this out, I can go in with my clay brush. I can insert a sphere in there if I want it to be a separate material, let's say. Or another cool one. I'm going to go to my comma key here. Brush. Where am I at? Brush. And we're going to go to miscellaneous. And if you want like a sculpted sphere in there, I'm going to go to spherical brush. And I can just use this to kind of pop like a little nice little spherical shape in there. Like so. And, uh, oh, if we want to do hatch lines, I guess that would be a couple different ways to do this. Let's crank up our Lazy Razy on our Dame standard here. We can just kind of go through here and just kind of put these things in. Now, if you want to constrain these to a straight line and you want them to go in that direction, use your transpose line to kind of pull in the shape, the direction you want to go. Hold down control and tap that white dot. That'll rotate your camera. So now you can hold down shift with your Dame, Dame standard and now It'll just constrain it to just that direction you want it to go to. A little bit easier to kind of get those lines going in the direction you want. Now we'll snap to the back here. We'll just connect these back up here. And like I said, these might not be the most elegant solutions. There's a million ways to do everything in 3D in general, and ZBrush especially. Um, but just off the top of my head, winging it couple different techniques that might be useful, some worthwhile. <laughs> Everybody still good? Cool. All right. So uh, we got our little horsey head here. Um, let's see if there's anything else interesting. We've gone over shadow box. We've gone over um, radial symmetry and sculpting and the different things. Uh, and really, it's just a lot of duplicating the bases out and then recreating the tops, it looks like. So if you wanted to really quickly, uh, we kind of already did the bishop here, and you could go through and uh, carve that in and add the little balls and stuff however you want. Um, this thing we can go ahead and probably delete. Uh, so if we duplicated this one off, we've already got a really nice base to start working from. And um, if we're going to do the castle, what I would probably do in that case is just do... Take this one, invert that. We'll go ahead and delete hidden. I'm going to, I can steal the cylinder here. So what I can do is let's turn off radial symmetry real quick. So I can just hit X to go out of radial symmetry temporarily. I can hold down Alt and grab this piece here. I can go to Q mesh polygroup all. I can hold down control and that'll just pop this piece off. And then I can just start modeling my castle on top of here. I can, I can insert a cylinder as well. Again, a million different ways to do this stuff, but I can go ahead and split this off here. Let's go ahead and quick save. And now if I want to scale this up, um, actually, let's go into solo mode here. I can anchor it here. And now we can, uh, looks like it kind of overshoots a little bit. So we can kind of scale this up, push it down, and I can go ahead and mask the top, control tap to invert that mask. We could pull up for the castle thing. And in order to make this, I think, a little bit easier, what I'm going to do is hold down Control shift go to the Select Lasso, grab this outer piece, Control shift drag to invert that, Delete Hidden, 
and now uh, I can just, you know, eventually Q mesh or extrude um, all polygons. And now we can start adding thickness like this. But first we need to add those little notches. So let's look how many uh, spans I have here. So a quicker way to kind of find out what I'm working with. I'm going to get rid of half. And then I'm going to get rid of this one. So we've got one, two, three, four times four is 16. I think so that's what we start out with that makes sense so I can make sure I go to activate symmetry change my radio count to 16 and now I know I am exactly where I want to be if that's necessary so I can hit X to go out of that I can go to insert single edge loop here and if I want to for instance say delete every other one I can activate symmetry and go to 8 and then when I hold down alt that'll alt tap these ones and then I can go to like delete single poly here or I don't even have to alt tab I can just delete single poly if I want to do a little bit more space out I can do four and delete all those and that'll give me that shape here um, and now I can go through and do like Q mesh poly group all we'll push this in and turn off double and we'll flip that back and that'll kind of give us this if we do let's do insert single edge loop here we'll push this down and then we'll do delete Edge loop complete, we'll delete, no. I don't want to delete any edges, I want to delete faces. So I'm going to go through here and just do a quick delete, single poly, change my radial count up to 16, and we can just delete those. So now what I can do is close convex hole. Here we'll close it, and here we'll close it. We'll make that a separate poly group here. So now I've got our little castle here, and we can do um, dynamic, uh, if we hit D, and then we can do like, you know, change our crease tolerance and crease polygroup and all that good stuff and kind of get that shape going for our little castle here. Um, another thing you can do, oh, we didn't talk about um, Q. So if we go here over here to dynamic, um, there's Q grid as well. That wouldn't work in this case because it's very cylindrical, but just because it's interesting to talk about, let's go ahead and do grab another cube here we'll go ahead and split mass points and just really quickly let's go insert multiple edge loops here and then we'll do Q mesh poly group all and then we'll do uh, Q mesh single poly we can kind of pull this out and then we'll pull this one out and we can just tap this one to do the exact same distance here and uh, if we wanted to we can go to insert multiple edge loops if you just do it once it'll go straight down the middle and then you can bevel that edge loop to kind of get that and then you can go through here and you can Q mesh a single poly you can, if you Q mesh down through it'll just go through and delete uh, not delete but it'll kind of bridge those automatically so you don't have to like delete through delete through and then sit there and bridge all day it'll just do it automatically for you now if you wanted to smooth this thing if we hit D it just averages everything so instead of doing that I'm gonna go over here to our dynamic and instead of doing smooth subdiv, we're going to do Q grid. And what that does, we do Q grid of one and then change that coverage around and turn on polyframe. You're going to see on square shapes, it does a really nice job of getting you that geometry. You can also mix Q grid with smooth subdiv. So you can kind of go through and add like two smooth subdivisions and then change your coverage here and then change the number of Q grids to kind of tighten those edges up. And then if you want to see what it's doing, you can hit apply. That'll, that'll you know delete lower and you can see where it's adding your edge loops to kind of get those really, really nice shapes as you go through. So D and Shift D. And then again, if you want to just continue making uh, changes to this thing, uh, you can do Shift D to kind of go out of that mode and um, you know continue to just Q mesh a single poly here, 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 and then here and here, and then we'll Q mesh a single poly straight back or we can insert single edge loop here and then yeah Q mesh single poly here and then you can hit D again and it'll automatically update to that kind of nice uh, finish there uh, let's see so um, yeah so uh, yeah good point so saving a morph target before uh, putting any it doing anything really is a really good way to kind of save yourself some headache as far as cleanup work. Good point, let me go talk about that. Um, so I didn't save a morph target here, so if I wanted to clean these things up, it'd be a really crappy manual process of like going through here and H polishing and trim dynamicking. 
uh, back down. However, uh, and you can also do your history undo slider, so we can just go ahead and just undo back to where we here, we're here. And we'll go ahead and do a morph target store. So now we'll always have this to come back to. So now if we go through here and then hold down control and tap that white circle here with our Damien standard brush, we can, we can be, it, it allows us to be a little bit even sloppier if we want. So we can kind of go through here and just be like, you know what, just like put in some lines, whatever. Like I'll, I'll clean up the lengths later. I'm just kind of putting in some lines here. And then we can go across here. And I guess we can be a little bit more careful as we go across the back here. Now, because we have a morph target stored, we can go back to our original. A um, couple different ways to do that. We can either use our morph brush to get rid of the things we don't like, or we can use our morph brush to bring in things we do like. So, for example, I go to BMO for our morph brush. Um, we can turn off RGB for that. We'll crank it up to 100 intensity. And we can just morph back exactly, uh, you know, our original mesh here. So if you want to morph it all back, we can just paint right over it, brings it back. You can also do switch, and that'll throw your morph target. It'll switch your original mesh to the forefront and then keep your morph target stored in the background. So now we can morph in our lines here, like so. So probably in this case, I would keep it like this and just go through here and just like, okay, perfect, cleaned it up. Good point, thanks for bringing that up. Um, uh, question, if you had it used a higher resolution for the shadow box, it would have been less cleanup afterwards. Yes, um, especially if you keep your masks nice and really tight. Uh, however, I usually do end up having to go back through there. And, and, you know, cleanup isn't that bad. You can group by normals and you can use polish by features once you have um, those poly groups kind of set in there. Actually, let's put in a little nose. Sorry, I get sidetracked there. Nice. Perfect. Um, so yeah, it would be less cleanup uh, depending on the kind of mesh you're making. I try, I try and tend to stay as low as possible as I'm working, but there are some instances if you're doing something very specific like gears where you'd really just want to crank up that shadow box resolution and just have it capture everything for you so you don't have to go in there and do a bunch of clipping and cleanup and H polish and trim dynamic or zero mesh. Um, Mizumi, thanks for so showing up. <laughs> um, nice bevel devs without uh, insane poly count. Re apologize and do them in an outside software. Um, no, and in ZBrush it can keep um, really beveled stuff. Like as we were going through here, and this is just it's a Z remeshed here. Um, you, like if you wanted to do this one, I would probably have to, you know, once I got my basic shape in there, I mean, you could Z modeler this just fine. It's not that complex of a shape. Um, in fact, you could have just painted that onto a plane, Z remeshed it, extruded it, gone through and gotten your basic shapes and then beveled the outside edges, which we could maybe just do real quick. How much time we got? We got about 30 minutes. Um, we can give that a shot. Let's try a different technique for this. And again, I'm just winging this. I don't know if this is going to work or not. It could be a disaster, but we'll give it a shot. So let's say if we wanted to poly model that horse as a different technique, um, we'll do Shift Z to bring it back. And we'll take this plane here. I'm gonna go to geometry, uh, turn off smooth modifier, divide this up a couple times, take my standard brush, go in here with RGB, and we'll just paint this horse on here. Now, just like our shadow box trick that we did earlier, if I go out of here, I can go in here. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. I'm gonna hit C and then just clean this up a bit. So here's our horse head, just painted on a plane. Uh, I'm gonna go here to, we'll to go ahead and delete lower subdivisions just cause I don't wanna deal with that. So we're gonna to go to masking. We're going to mask by intensity. Now if I turn off my poly paint here, my colorize, <clears throat> you're gonna see that's a mask it gives us. I wanna clean that mask up, <clears throat> excuse me. So we're gonna to go to masking, mask adjust and we're gonna change this focal shift down to like negative 70 ish. That'll go ahead and clean that up for us. Now you can blur that out and then tighten it back up if you want, or, and if we hit control W, we'll make our own poly group here, we'll delete hidden. Um, you can also go through here to clean up those edges. Just go to masking, turn off everything but border, mask by border, invert that mask, and then just do a deformations polished by features. And you can kind of just clean that up. <clears throat> Same thing for that extraction cleanup is, would be that kind of feature right there. Uh, so now that we have this, we can say <clears throat> a ZBrush. Let's go to depth of size down to zero. Target polygon count of five is fine. We'll do half <clears throat> and then hit Z Remesh here. 
and this will just give us nice low res horse head geometry <clears throat> that we can then go through. Yeah, let's do half. There we go. And now we can do like Q mesh, polygroup all. We'll pull out a thickness here if we do a mirror and weld across the X. Ooh, you know what? We need to orient ourselves here in space. I always want to do <clears throat> Z forward. When I did our plane, that put us in a weird axis here. So I'm going to go over here to deformation and rotate in the Y negative 90. There we go. So now our horse head is Z forward here. So now when I do, let's go ahead and turn off our floor. We'll do Q mesh polygroup all, pull us out. Ah, no problem. So whenever it does that, <clears throat> occasionally ZBrush will get in a weird state. Um, but whenever it says, oh, oops, I crashed, but I've got a recovered file for you, you can get that back if you just go to comma key, go to ZBrush, recovered files, and then just grab that last tool there. Hit F, let's see, there it is. And again, we'll make sure we're oriented correctly. There we go. So, we'll go through here, Q mesh polygroup all, pull this out. And now if I do a quick mirror and weld across the X, that'll give me two sides here. We can hit X symmetry. And, um, you know, I can either, if I do if I do Q mesh again, it's gonna add a new edge loop. I can hold down shift and just pull it along that surface normal. And then I can go through here and like clip this into the shape I want. I can go through here and like bevel edge loop complete on, oh, it's gonna do something weird. Let's do inset here. So I'm gonna go here to inset, uh, all polygroup all region. We can kind of inset an edge loop here. And now I can do Q mesh polygroup all and hold down shift and kind of bring that out. And if I need to, I can go through and clean up some of this stuff. We can go collapse edge and just kind of move these things around a little bit. So that'll kind of give us a nice clean look here. You can go to crease polygroup, hit D, and now you can do all the sort of box model -y stuff you want to do. Um, cool, cool. Um, so uh, for new rig, ZBrush extensively for a moto production game assets. Oh, I'm not much of a, I mean, I have my hardware here. I did, oh, you know what? I remember what it was called here. This might be fun. Let's see. New. I always forget what it was called and I can never find it. But if you want to, let me see, New Horizon. ZBrush, man, I can, ah, uh, key shot. So I did a New Horizon demo for AMD where we did ZBrush and key shot right when they first announced Horizon, New Horizon. Sorry, I gotta find this. I need to keep. There we go. Oh, this is a weird one. Let's see. Ch -ch -ch. Ryzen works Ridge Video, YouTube. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And I'm not trying to sell hardware one way or another, but because I did do it and it did have uh, ZBrush included. Um, let's see if we can go through here. Uh, oh, crap. Yeah, I need to just save this. Um, I did a demo on the new Ryzen hardware for ZBrush and Keyshot and just kind of went through that. It was kind of interesting um, during their New Horizon thing, but I can never find the video. Um, cool, cool. And everybody will have better um, stuff for you as far as hardware stuff. I won't get too involved in that. Um, how do you optimize ZBrush preferences? Um, so if you go over here to your preferences menu, there's a memory. Where's that stuff at? And I, honestly, I don't even touch this stuff, if I'm being perfectly honest. But there is um, mem. You can go through here and you can change some of this stuff. And also, where's the one? Performance. Uh, you can test your multi-threading. You can set multi-threading uh, priorities and 
kind of go through here and change some of this stuff. I don't know that I've ever even touched this stuff, if I'm being honest here, but definitely check that out if you guys have better um, options for him, but for sure, shout it out. Um, cool, cool. And again, if I miss any questions, just keep keep asking it. Um, oh, so where do you get that pop-up menu? Are you talking about this one? Um, Dream Zion says this little custom menu here. I have, uh, there's a lot of different ways to do this, but I do have that. If you want, if you just want it, I have it available for download, but I can show you how to make it. Um, I have an intro to ZBrush part two series that'll walk you through custom hotkeys, custom interface, custom menus. Um, yeah, there you go. Yeah, so that'll be um, all those videos there and you can kind of go through there and kind of set up your own. It's basically like a marking menu in Maya uh, and it's pretty easy to do, like to make a custom menu. So here's my custom menu here and then you can assign a hotkey to any of these menus. So you hold down control, alt and tap and then assign a hotkey. So my hotkey is alt A and then I'll go ahead and um, put those up here. If you do want to download it for some reason and I would say just make your own. This is There's nothing special about this one. But on the off chance you do, if you go here, scroll all the way down to Intro to ZBrush Files, and there's my custom menu. You can install that if you're if you're so inclined. Um, uh, Axel asks, when working in production, how would you use ZModeler? Would you try and keep the subdivision and clean geometry until the end stage, or using it just a starting point and then dynamic develop? Look, that again, that kind of um, depends on the end result. Like in this case here, I might start with ZModeler and I try not to be too, um, let's go ahead and undo back to before we did the bevels. So order of operations here, if I want to change how these things work, you know, I'd probably do this first and then go back through and go, okay, bevel edge loop complete. Or, or yeah, we're gonna have to do an inset, aren't we? Let me see if there's a better solution for that. I could do frame I could frame this poly group and do a curved bevel to force it. Let's try that. So I'm going to open up these open edges here, and I'm going to go to stroke, curve functions. We're going to frame our mesh border here. And now with ZModeler, what I can do is when I hover over a curve here, I can do uh, bevel all curves, and that will kind of force a bevel along exactly where I want. And I can just do a little bit of cleanup here with our move brush here. We can kind of just toss that back. So. That's another option. Uh, if this kind of dipped in a little bit, I can go through here. We can do an insert single edge loop, hold down alt, and then we can do a quick mirror and weld again to get that back. And that'll be nice and straight. Um, so now, like I was saying, if we go here to crease poly group and hit D, that's a horse face I'm looking for. <laughs> and we can go over here and like crank up our smooth subdivision on our dynamic. And if I really like this, but then you know, and I can go through here, and I can go through here and make nice simple changes because really we're just averaging simple vertices here with just a dynamic preview on it. So we're just pushing around really low res geometry, so it'll give us really nice smooth results no matter what. But if I ever do want to go, you know what, let's dynamic preview, okay, I like that, I'm going to apply it, I'm going to go ahead and turn off project, turn off blur, crank up my Z Dynamesh here, and um, go ahead and just do some like sculpting or insert mesh brushes. Let's go to um, Alt E and let's go ahead and brush insert B, I. We can kind of just start carving out. I'm gonna hold down Alt, turn on double here. And now we can, oops. Yeah, I mean, hell, let's just do it. Let's push that through here. We can kind of punch through here and kind of smooth this down. We can also do maybe, let's go ahead and let's do a slice curve through this object here. So I can, um, you know, let's just do it from front to back. We'll do something weird. So I'll do front to back. I'll turn on groups for my Dynamesh here. And I'll do Control Shift, Control Shift A. And we'll turn off groups. Go ahead and split hidden. So now I've got these two separate pieces here. And I mean, I could have just Z-modelered that. But let's say I'm just kind of playing around. So I can kind of just isolate this one. Isolate this one here. And again, we're just kind of having a little bit of fun. Just kind of playing around with these different shapes. And then if I wanted to, like, attach those things here, I could go to... Uh, let's go ahead and drop a sphere right here, and we'll kind of stretch these spheres out a little bit, and we'll kind of put this one here. We'll do two of these. We'll do one here, and then I'll hold down Control Shift and snap out a copy here. So we'll kind of do two of these spheres here, and then we'll isolate those spheres. We'll go ahead and split hidden here, and now with these spheres, I can go through a slice curve, and I can slice them right up where they are there. 
And now even for these ones, because I have them sliced, I can turn on groups. I'm going to crank up the resolution a little bit here. We can Dynamesh these. And now I can split these ones off, Control shift a Let's go ahead and split hidden here. So now with this one here, I can hold down Shift, Alt-Tap this one, Shift, shoot it to the top. I'll add this one. I'll merge it down, Dynamesh these together. And now on this one, I'm going to shoot this one to the top, Alt-Tap this one, hold down Shift, Bent Up Arrow, shoot that to the top, move it down one, do a subtractive. Um, let's go ahead and merge these down here, cut this one out like this. Oops, I kind of did a, I did too many merges there. Hold on just a second. Let's do here. I merged, uh, I got a little bit sloppy with my merges there. Let's do control shift. Let's grab all of these, control shift A, and then we'll go ahead and split those off. And now if I dynamesh those, there we go. So that'll cut through this side here. And oops, I forgot to pull those through. Let's pull these through just a little bit more. So I'm gonna isolate this one, mask it, Hold on just a second. Got a little uh, Control Shift A, delete hidden, and then we'll grab this one mask, invert that. We're gonna pull these out just a little bit so it kind of makes sure it goes all the way through. And now we can kind of smooth these down. Go back here. We can smooth these down. If that uh, is a little bit ridged back here, I think when I went through and I had groups on, I think I was a little bit sloppy too, but we can just really, really quickly go through here and H-polish this stuff back down, not a big deal for a little bit of cleanup. And then Control W, make sure groups is turned off. And now back here, I can go in with my clay brush or that clay brush that we made. Oops, we got rid of it, I think. And so we can clone this one off, go to drag dot, bring in our alpha, focal shift down to negative 100, and we can just drag in like, kind of a recessed area here. And then we can go to, um, let's make sure dynamic isn't turned on for that, yeah. Brush, insert, BI, industrial parts here. We'll go in here and put in a little screw port here. We'll do a head of split mass points. We'll hit D to turn on dynamic preview. And then we can use W, control shift, and we'll just pop that one right in there. So here, Oh, we also need to move that back. So we'll mask that out and then we'll, because that wasn't a straight line, we'll just push that right back in there. So now we've got kind of a, a little screw thing that we can kind of figure out. And again, it wasn't a bunch of like Z modeler and trying to figure out like, well, how do you, how do you make these things blend perfectly together here? Let me see, brush. Um, shift, auto masking here. Go to smooth, stronger, and make sure groups is off, and we'll just dynamesh this stuff together. There we go. So now you can kind of smooth these things together. You know, whatever kind of bevel you're looking for there, you kind of build that in. And once you have this, you can go and rebuild it if you want and make it super nice and sharp. Um, we can also, let's do it. We uh, did a little bit of this last time. Let's do external render key shot, auto merge. We'll throw this in the key shot real quick. So, um, let's see, question, question. Let's see if Nozumi found it. Yes, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna save this because I can never remember where this is. So let's say favorites. I'll throw this into stream. There I am. Yeah, so check out this video that Nozumi posted and I was talking about the uh, Ryzen workstation. Uh, that one. Um, are you actually leaving ZBrush for modeling or at any time, or do you stay as most possible with ZBrush all task? Um, on this channel, on the Pixelogic channel, I'm uh, live streaming. I'm always going to stay in ZBrush. Um, I might do a little bit of Marvelous Designer and bring it into ZBrush and ZRemesh and that kind of stuff, but for the most part on this channel, I'm stick within ZBrush. Um, on my channel, I'll do everything. I do. I use a ton of different programs. I use ZBrush to get my ideas out for sure. And then I, you know, like, we, like we've done just even today, we've done a ton of just different cool modeling stuff here. Let's uh, open up the key shot, sorry. Um, we've done a ton of cool modeling here. Um, so, you know, you can do anything inside of ZBrush, I would say, by all means, um, ZBrush it up. 
So let's go in here and we'll do like a metal, or actually we'll go into our metals here. And we'll do a, maybe a nickel, polished nickel on this back piece here. And then we'll go into our, we won't do skin, we'll do a plastic, hard plastic, shiny, or yeah, I mean we could do that. We can do like a shiny plastic here. And we can also do a rough, shiny, cloudy, composite clear. So we can go clear, plastic, shiny. Let's make that like a clear plastic here. And then let's go ahead and add, let's go back to our metals. We'll do, let's do a brass here. Um, and actually let's go to, I don't even know what I'm done. Let's, uh, let's go to the uh, Exalta paint hot hues and we'll do like this one here. Or you know what, maybe like red on red or orange on red. I mean, I mean orange can be a yellow. Let's try that one. So uh, you can go into Keyshot and do all sorts of cool rendering here. If we change our environment, we can go to, um, actually ZBrush has some cool environments in here. We can double click these. This will give us a new lighting environment. If you don't want to see the lighting environment, you can come over here to your environment, turn on color, and just give it like just a basic color here and just use your environment to light uh, the object. If you want more studio lighting, go near the studio and just drop in some really nice product rendery lighting in here. Um, what else other cool stuff can we do? There's sun and sky, ZBrush. If you want to, you can do, let's do studio lighting and we'll do a startup studio and we'll go to our materials here. We'll go to ZBrush materials and we'll throw on some ZBrush clay here and let's go to our materials here. So we'll do here, here and we'll keep that um, little metal in there. Actually, you know what? We'll keep that as well. And you can also go in here to your back plate and ZBrush has some good uh, back plates you can use if you wanted to do like this type of thing we do a lot. So we can kind of just throw this black back plate in here. And now you can kind of, you know, kind of set this up so the clay kind of matches. You can hold down control and right click, or I'm sorry, control and left click and move your lighting around to kind of match your lighting up. Like so, go to your lighting here and let's do a product light. Um, if you wanted to say, make this thing out of beer, go to materials here. You could, uh, we can set up a new scene. So we have a default scene set up here. Let's do a quick add scene set. We'll call it beer. And now we've got, we're on the beer scene set. So now we can just replace everything with liquid beer. And if we ever wanted to get that back, we could go back to our default and we're good to go. Uh, but if we make this out of beer, you probably want to go to lighting, full simulation to get caustics and stuff to work correctly. And now we have a horse head made of beer on a Pixelogic back drop there. Um, 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 let's see, I miss anything? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so model. Um, so when you bring in your model, you have to go Z4. Just make sure, usually most programs are pretty um, consistent. So if you're modeling in another program, just make sure you're Z forward, Y up. And then when you bring it into ZBrush, you'll be oriented automatically. Um, and yeah, you can deformation unify to get it uh, to the world axis center of ZBrush here, if you wanna make sure. Or you can also go in here to geometry and there's size and position. You can zero these things out and uh, well, the size you would want to zero out, but position you can zero out as well. Um, cool, cool. And then, uh, okay, yeah, so snapshot, if you wanted to do like, there's a couple different ways you can do shift S, shift S, and then you can do like a three quarters, turn on perspective for these ones. You can go shift S and then shift S. Um, another cool way to kind of, if you wanted to do a character sheet is um, that document zap link properties we were talking about earlier. You can use this to save camera views, but you can also have the ability to make a character sheet here. So if you go to your front here and you can go, okay, here's my front. It makes a back automatically. Here is my right, makes a left automatically. Here is custom one. And then here is custom two and then if you hit make character sheet it'll take all of these with uh, PNG transparency and throw it into Photoshop and it'll just give you a nice turnaround sheet.
cool, cool. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. And and that's a good point you bring up. I eat models. Um, so when I first started out using ZBrush, it was very much like, well, I'm just going to model everything in another program, bring it in, and then I'll put little scratches on the edges. And then by the time I was on DC Universe Online, and then by the time I got to the end of production, I did everything in ZBrush just because it's kind of a pain to be like, well, if I, there's no reason to hop out. Like you said, you just need to learn how to do it in here. And then there's no reason to keep hopping back and forth unless you're doing something very, very specific. Like for example, like I was talking about, if you're a marvelous designer for your clothing and then hopping back in and zero meshing and projecting all, which if you go back through the videos that we do here, um, you'll see a little bit more of that. Cool. And uh, we have streamed quite a bit on the uh, Marvelous Designer to ZBrush workflow. If you want to see, because uh, ZBrush is really, really good at uh, doing that stuff. If you want to go to this um, YouTube channel here, and this goes, this is me going back and forth between Marvelous and ZBrush and all the couple of cool different ways you can, you can do that. Um, let's see. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. So... Hmm, let me look at the, gee, oops, my chat's still working, okay, because I think I just went through and got rid of that thing, so let's go to, so in this case here, let me download this real quick, show and folder for I have to leave, let's throw this onto the desktop, come on, there we go. So for example, if I wanted to make something like this, texture import desktop, this thing here, texture, add it to my spotlight. So if I wanted to make this thing here, um, I would probably, I guess the easiest way for me to kind of think about this kind of object would be to do it in Dynamesh first. I mean, you could, you know, paint it onto a plane uh, get that shape, and I mean, it is in three, it's it's kind of a three-quarter uh, view or a, for a perspective view here. So you would have to find that shape here, and then you could add a cylinder and extrude that cylinder, and then dynamesh those together. And then once you have your shapes in there, you know, poke this stuff through, then you can Z-remesh it. Or if you felt like it, you could go in and Z-modeler these things very uh, accurately. Um but usually for me, it's just making a Dynamesh blob. So it'd be like, okay, here's here's where I'm going to start. And let's see, Control N, just grab a Sphere 3D, edit, make Polymesh 3D. And we'll go ahead and go across Mirror and we'll do X axis here. And we'll turn on our floor. Make sure Z4 is this way. So then I could kind of just position this thing here. We'll go ahead and just Dynamesh this thing. So very quickly, let's go to Preferences, Edit, uh, oops, kill some of this here. Uh, edit, line cursor to surface here, and we can pull this back and pull this forward, and then um, let's go through here. Now again, because it's in a three-quarter view, let's go ahead and clear all our views here, and I'll do a custom one so I can always snap back, but you know, it's going to be a little bit difficult to kind of work with that. So let's go ahead and turn on RGB. We'll just kind of paint in perspective where this stuff needs to go. And then I can go to the side here and make a little bit more informed decisions as far as like how I want this thing to kind of swoop around and then go in here. And kind of carve this out and cut this back. Double tap here. And this thing kind of comes back and then down and then Dynamesh that together. And then, of course, it's not going to be that wide. You're going to sit on this thing, so kind of shrink this down here. And that's kind of the basic shape I would start with. And then we can go back to custom one. And again, let's turn it in perspective mode, too. I have something I should have done earlier. So we can kind of move this back into place. Let's go ahead and clear all custom one. And now we can go through here and just start to move this stuff around to kind of get a little bit closer to that final shape here. And then here, we can go in with our trim dynamic, and I should probably have this thing up as a reference. Let's see, yeah. So here we can just turn off our poly paint, 
as we're kind of working and you can go through here and use trim dynamic to really quickly just be like, okay this, this shape's going to go down through here and around here and it doesn't have to be perfect like i said you i mean if you wanted it to be perfect as you're z modeling it um, by all means sit there and plot points all day long um, that's certainly one way to do it for me and the way my brain works and how uh, the type of speed i like to work at i kind of tend to prefer to do it in this method here just so I can kind of get my shapes in there. Let's go ahead and we'll repaint this on here. Now that we've got this a little bit closer, we can go ahead and just repaint our details back on. And if this is kind of getting busy, you can go in here to your color, drop that RGB intensity down. We'll just do color fill object, just kind of knock that back a bit. Um, now for this shape here, that's going to poke straight through and it's kind of this outer shape here. So you could do topology brush, but it's going to want to, um, not go straight through. Well, let's, we can do that. We'll do BTO and we'll go, okay, here's where I want the shape. Like this. And then uh, we can just add lines through here to get our shape here. We can make a shape here. We'll go ahead and split mass points, go into solo mode. I'm going to go out of X symmetry. We're going to go ahead and kill that side, delete hidden. And if to straighten these uh, lines out, what I can do is isolate this poly group here, and then we'll just clip this thing out to here. And then we'll take this inside poly group here. We can mask and invert, and now we can just clip this thing back here. There we go. And that'll kind of push through. Uh, of course, we might need to rotate this thing around a bit. We want to keep that shape but um, we want it to push straight back. So again, I'm just going to clip this straight. And now we can just really quickly with Q mesh, do Q mesh, polygroup all, hold down shift, pull that through, do a quick, whoops, mirror and weld if you want. Now I can just poke a hole straight through this thing. So I'm going to put this down one, go to um, subtractive mesh, merge these down, clip this out. And, you know, I probably should have spent a little more time making that, um, Let's hold down shift. I'm in smooth, stronger mode, so I'm going to crank that down a little bit so it's not so intense. And I can also crank up my resolution of my Dynamesh here. And if you want to smooth and not get rid of your drawing, you can just turn off RGB. And now you can kind of go through here. And again, I'm just kind of blocking this shape out really quickly. Um, another useful reason to do this is if you want to get this in the game engine really quickly, there's no point in hemming and hawing over smoothing everything perfectly. Just get it done really quick and then throw it in the game. Like throw this in a game with some wheels and go, okay, does everything work right? And then you can kind of start evaluating an engine um, as opposed to spending months and months to get the perfect thing in only to find out, oops, you're going to have to make some serious changes because, you know, it's not going to work. So then really quickly, Alt-E-M is going to go grab a custom cylinder here. We can just start dragging that cylinder on here. We can shrink the cylinder down here. And we can also, let's go ahead and mask this end here and invert that mask. Wait, let's go ahead and split these off. That'll be a little bit easier. So I'm going to take this one, Control Shift A. We'll go ahead and split hidden, do a quick save. If you want to reload that from the quick save, you can just go into your, whoops, quick save menu here and load this up. So now if we kind of mask this end out, and invert that. We can go through here, select this one, Shift-C to bring this back, and now we can kind of scale this down. Let's see. Scale. There we go. Sorry. Uh, scale this thing down to kind of match that kind of shape you have here. And now even in this case, you could go through and be like, okay, so I want that to have uh, a capped end with some uh, thickness here so I can go through here and hold down alt and we can go ahead and delete hidden bring this back go into custom one here let's go ahead and rotate this around a bit and we can go ahead and I guess we can uh, dynamesh off that for that one now um, so we can go ahead and take this one here let's rotate it around a bit and we wanted to add a little bit more uh, thickness down at the bottom. I don't know why it's having such a hard time. Oh, you know what? It's not. It's just me being weird. 
So we'll go ahead and hit turn on double. We can go ahead and bridge uh, edges here. So we'll go here to here. And sometimes it's easier to use a mouse to kind of get these edges here. So here to here. And now we can just Q mesh these down a little bit, give us a little bit more breathing room here. And then once we have that shape, it looks like we might need to mask this back here and kind of pull these down. Um, so now that we have this shape, we can go through here and we can turn on dynamic. So let's go ahead and turn on our crease tolerance dynamic on and kind of get this thing a little bit more evened out here. So now we're pulling around a little bit simpler geo. So we can kind of get that shape here that we're looking for. And now we can do shift D and we can probably even just get rid of, let's go through here and just like delete single poly here, here, and probably all these ones here as well. You could delete by poly group, but this is simpler enough. And then we'll do Q mesh, all polygons, pull in some thickness, Q mesh, not scale. Pull this in, make sure double is turned off and then we'll flip. And then we'll do another crease tolerance here. Hit D for dynamic preview. And then we can just go through here and we can crease these up. So we'll do crease edge here, here, go back and kind of get this into place here. Now, of course, you could dynamesh these things together and smooth those transitions out between them. Uh, Z remesh these shapes if you want to. We've got to turn perspective back on. That would help. Um, for this bicycle seat up here, if we turn this back on, we can do it. Just a really quick one. We'll do standard brush RGB. We'll paint where we want that seat to go. And then we can do control shift. We'll do a slice curve. And we can just really quickly, if we want to, you know, we can turn on. We'll do Alt once, Alt again, Alt again, Alt again. And we'll just kind of slice through here. Give it a second. So now we've got a poly group here. So on this one, um, you can isolate just this poly group here. And you can go into your poly group settings. So it's subtool, geometry. Uh, we can go ahead and toss on a, we can Z remesh this stuff if we want. We can also go into edge loop and start doing some panel loops here where we kind of panel loops this thing off. Let's go ahead and turn off our poly frame here. Um, we can turn on, uh, it's going to be a pain. Let's see. So panel loops, if we turn on, uh, we have double turned on and we can also do Where's the one where we double and then we, we can regroup panels and we want to, uh, bu, 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 bu. I think that'll do it. Oh, append, where's append at? Append is grayed out. Oh, let's undo that, there we go. So here, we're gonna turn on append, regroup panels. Let's just crank that thickness up. So now we've got this one here. We can go ahead and isolate this one, control shift A, split that off. Turn off all these polyframes here. So now when we when we did that panel loops, it kind of gave us kind of mediocre geometry. So we can we can definitely use Z remesh to kind of clean this up. So we'll go into solo mode here. Um, you can Z remesh with polygroups, or if I want, I can just take this top one, delete hidden. We'll do a quick Z remesher. We'll do 51. We'll do half adapted size down to zero. And again, you don't have to do this. This is just one of those things. You can just keep it panel loops. Um, but just for a little bit of cleanup here, we'll just zero mesh this back down and then we'll give it thickness. Some nice, easy, simple geometry here. And then we can go back here, Q mesh, polygroup all. We'll pull this in and we'll flip that and we'll crease polygroup here and then we'll hit D for our dynamic preview. And now we've got a little seat that we can, you know, start modifying with a little bit cleaner geometry here, that kind of stuff. And, you know, go through here. And again, with your crease, uh, levels in your dynamic subdiv. So we do this up to four and then our crease levels down to like two. We can kind of start dialing that in. Let's do crease level one. There we go. Kind of soften that out a little bit. Um, let's see. Some questions here. Uh, when I save custom views, I tend to reload them. Sometimes they always get flipped. Actually, oh, shadows. Yeah, so we can go into key shot here. And the shadows are really diffuse here, but if we go into our lighting, our environment here, we'll go to color. 
and let's do let's change our bright let's do something funner so we'll change our brightness of our uh, room down quite a bit and I'm gonna go to edit add geometry plane and then in our scene view I can right click this and we'll do move part and we will just move this thing up here and actually you know what let's go back to our default it'll render a little bit faster lighting product so I can take our plane actually our, our plane did end up in default so let's go ahead and kill that let's go to our default scene edit add geometry plane here move part we can just move this up rotate it around uh, move this over and now at this one let's go to our environment lights and we'll just do light I'm sorry not our environment light materials we'll go to our lights here we'll say yes we want to move it there um, come on give me oh you know what it's probably area there we go so our area light here we'll throw an area light on here and we'll just put in our own custom lighting this might be just a pro feature we're going to change this to watt if we crank that up that'll give us some sunlight here and uh, now if we go back to lighting product here it should be um, um, um. there we go ground illumination um, so there, there's our shadows there and let's see product interesting okay so yeah then we can just kind of go through here let's change this a little bit so we'll change those wattage down just a bit tad um, kind of go throw in your own custom lighting and again you can bring your environment lighting back up if that's the case or you can just completely kill it and just have your own custom light set up in there um, correcting z um, let's see make sure I didn't miss anything here uh, how would you about correcting zbrush lens distortion after BPR I assume in Photoshop but how do you calculate the correct countermeasures for a quick workflow um, the only lens distortion stuff I worry about is when I'm doing uh, painting portraits and stuff and I usually end up doing like draw menu angle of view with my perspective to kind of match this in I usually end up around like 17 for portrait stuff but um really precise stuff I'm not sure about that's a good one um yeah as far as like just getting fast in ZBrush it's just that muscle memory and just using it a lot cool hotkeys and stuff yeah hotkeys help a lot custom menus help a lot because you know again if I want to do something as simple as like mirror mirror and weld um, you'd have to go down here to like deformation mirror and then geometry modified topology mirror and weld and it's just a lot easier just to do mirror mirror and weld right here in your own custom menu so it's just kind of isolating what you use a lot and uh, doing that kind of stuff so um, handlebars and the front fork uh, I think they're just cylinders just kind of getting those into place right so it would be like this thing here this front fork so it'd be like alt e m let's go to my custom menu just grab a cylinder on there let's go ahead and split mass point shift d rotate that around and uh you know let's get this in the in the place here really and a lot of it if you're just matching something is just a lot of tedious like okay let me go in and put in a cylinder and then snap to my view and then move it into place and then shrink it down let's go across the local symmetry here shrink it down and then find that surface normal here and then snap my camera view back and then push this down you are going to want to make sure you're out of um, perspective here uh, and then you could either control shift drag a copy out or you can just duplicate this off drag it down and then if you want to um, you can hit control W for both of these you can merge them down temporarily and then kind of rotate them into place a little bit better and then if you wanted to shrink this bottom one down just isolate that go ahead and split that apart go into solo mode hit E uh, and then you can kind of just scale along that axis from the center here and then W to kind of push that down and just continue to kind of build in cylinders Uh, what feature do I like most with ZBrush? Oh boy. 
I'll have to get back to you on that one. <laughs> um, uh, all of them. Uh, actually, yeah, that does look like a... I guess this could be a duck head here, but that, that I was thinking that the um, the knight also looked like a duck head too. Um, yeah, so key br uh, key shot HD. Uh, you can buy the key shot bridge that goes from ZBrush to key shot in one button click, and then you get a, this this version of key shot I have. You have to go through ZBrush, but it's a lot cheaper than just the regular key shot here. So definitely check that out if you want to just do really quick key shot renders from ZBrush. It's excellent. Uh, Cool, cool. All right. Yeah, and as far as that custom menu, I'll just post this again. Um, if you go to my YouTube channel playlist, um, if you go to Intro to ZBrush, here's all this. Here's all the stuff if you want a lot of cool stuff to look at. If you go to specifically to Intro to ZBrush Part 2 here, that'll show you how to set up your own custom hotkeys and interface and stuff so you can start cruising in ZBrush. <laughs> Uh, make sure guys, you can combine some tools and penetrating meshes. It's uh, it's kind of depends on your engine and how you want to optimize. Uh, I tend to work sloppy getting ideas out, and then I'll go through and refine as needed because it's usually not a big deal to rebuild something uh, quickly. The hard part is getting everything into place where you want it, and how you want it, and then everything past that. Once you know exactly what you want in 3D, then it's just a matter of cleaning it up a little bit so I tend to err on the side of getting stuff done quickly and then rebuilding as needed. Um, I do use ZBrush retopology for game models all the time. Um, just easier to stay in ZBrush a lot of the time and uh, you know and but I, I topologize and everything so there's I, I topologize in like five different programs depending on my mood mostly. <laughs> um, Mortar Kaner asks, will I stream this week on my channel? I will. I've missed a whole bunch in a row just because Thursday nights are usually shot for me trying to get out of work and stuff. So I changed it to Thursday morning. So the time you showed up here, I will be on my channel on Thursday morning, same time. So I'll be a little more consistent now that I'm in the morning. Um, so oh, this will be my last thing before I head out. So I can retopologize something real quick. Um, there's a couple different ways to do that. So if I grab this piece here, we can go to like BTO, and we can use our topology brush to kind of start retopologizing stuff if we want, and just kind of dragging this out. Uh, if you if you touch, with, depending on your brush size here, it will oops, it'll make it the thickness. If you put your brush size down to one, it won't give you any thickness here. I'm going to go ahead and do um, hide point delete hidden. Um, you can also just go through here, shoot this to the top. I'm going to go to insert. A Z sphere here, and we're just gonna grab our Z sphere, hit X to go across X symmetry, um, scale this down just to kind of get it out of the way, and you can usually just hide it inside of a mesh if you want. I'm gonna go to density of one, edit topology, and uh, in my, I mean, we retopologize a bunch of stuff on this channel, so and on my channel. So if you go to the Twitch link that I sent out, and also the ZBrush one, which I'll have for you here. If you go back through like the very first videos, we'd retopologize entire bodies and stuff. But um, but yeah, just really quickly, you can just go through here and just start retopologizing. To make this a little bit easier, I'm gonna go matte cap pearl, medium gray. And now I can just start, you know, going through here and adding topology as needed. And then kind of just split these things up like so, just kind of going back and forth. And um, if you have anything on your screen, it'll snap to it. We can use move. And then we can hit A to make our adaptive skin here. If we like it, we can make an adaptive skin, insert it, grab it. We don't need the Z-sphere anymore. Delete that. And now we've got topology here. We can go ahead and Q-mesh polygroup all and kind of pull that out. And then we can go through here and do any of our like dynamic stuff we want to do or Z-modeler stuff if we want to like Q-mesh uh, pull back through here, single poly or like inset, single poly here to here and then want to poke a hole through here so we'll cube mesh polygroup ball and just push that back through and now we've got our dynamic here and we can grease polygroup and all the cool stuff we've done up to this point so i think my time is up yeah i'm probably sneaking into somebody else's time here so i'm gonna head out hope you guys had a good time i uh, hope i wasn't too boring going through some of this stuff but um yeah so oops there's my alarm to go put the trash out so, um, 
yeah, I will see you guys on my channel Thursday morning, and I will see you guys next Tuesday uh, on this channel. We'll go through some other cool stuff here. Everybody have a good day, and thanks for showing up.